Hi guys, it's Emily from Novel Novels and welcome to today's video. This is my December book haul. Now, unfortunately, I'm filming this on the 29th of December and I have just caught COVID. So excuse the drained look. Your video that you would have seen before this, the wrap up would have probably had me looking rough as well. But hopefully, this is going to be a fun start to the vlogs that I'm going to be doing in, December, in January. Hopefully, it will just be the first week where I'll be looking a bit rough. But I had to film this video because it's one that I get so excited about every time. And it's one where I show you the books that I've got. I've been gifted some amazing books, although anything I receive after today will go in January's haul. So just to give your heads up on that, but I can't wait to show you the books I got. And it is one thing that will make me smile despite feeling awful. So the first book I want to show you is a book that I got from the lovely cat from Brews and Reviews, Love Hypnotist. She is always the sweetest lady ever. She bought me a book that she's loved and that a lot of other people that I know love. She sent me a lovely little note. She couldn't wait to give me this. So I am planning to send her a treat at some point because she's such a lovely lady and check her out. I'll link her channel and those other people that I'm talking about down below. So this is one, The Love Hypnotist. I think everyone knows about it. It's a quite, it's when a fake relationship between scientists meets the irrepressible force of attraction. It throws one woman's carefully calculated theories into the love, into the chaos. It looks brilliant. What I'm super about, excited about, she raved about it and a lot of other fellow booktubers have raved about it. So I can't wait to pick this up. Sorry, I won't give you very clear descriptions of books because I'm struggling to fight the urge to cough at the moment. So from the lovely Chloe, she sent me in my parcel, she sent me a load of other gifts, which was brilliant. But her, the book she sent me is To Love and To Loathe, which is a... Pride and Prejudice retelling. We're going to be reading it together. The Widow D Diana Lady Templeton and Jeremy Marcus of Frank William <coughs> are the infamous for their bickering as, the, as for their flirtation. Shortly before a fortnight long party at Jeremy's country estate, Diana is shocked when he appears at her home with an unexpected proposition. Pride and Prejudice retelling. You know Pride and Prejudice. I love talking about that. I'll show you a book in a minute. She got me that. And she also got me The Unhoneymooners by Christian, Christian Lauren, which is apparently two authors writing together. I nearly bought this, but something or uh, somebody, aka Gemma, stopped me. You all know about this. Um, Olive is unlucky in love. Her identical twin sister, Amy, on the other hand, is probably the luckiest person in the world. While she's about to marry her dream man, Ollie, Olive is forced to play nice with her nemesis, the best man. And then something happens and they end up going on honeymoon together, so... Can't wait to read that. Again, that'll be a book I'll be reading with Chloe. Then the lovely Gemma from Read a Book Gem put this in my Christmas parcel, Underneath the Christmas Tree by Heidi Swain. There is a book that apparently I have to read before this, which is in the in this series, so I'll be reading that book this year so that I can save this for next Christmas. We'll see when you guys get this. It'll be this Christmas, but you know. Winter's Trees is the home of Christmas, but for Lisa, Liza Winter... It's a milestone around her neck. It's a Christmas tree farm with her father's pride and joy, but now he's gone, she can't have, can't have anything to do with it. Until her father's business partner decides to retire and she must go back to handle the transition to his son, Ned. I wanted to buy this. She stopped me. I'm glad she did, because it's a perfect Christmas present. <coughs> then my sister, Vicky, bought me the Cough Found classic edition of Pride and Prejudice, with my, amongst all my other presents she got me. And you know I love Pride and Prejudice. I love this Cough Found classics. And look, on the back of this, on the back of this, Heaven and Earth are the shades of Pemberley to, to be thus polluted. I'm keeping that on there. It looks beautiful. It's a gorgeous edition. Thank you, Vicky. You've starred. you raced it this year. She always does ace it. She's brilliant. Then my sister Charlie bought me The Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid, which is a book that I have nagged her. I wanted it forever. She also did buy me The Good Bear, but it's on my Goodreads shelf, and you'll see it in my, you would have seen that in my um, wrap up because I read it on Christmas Eve. But this is a book everyone's talked about. I'm going to be reading it in March for my read along, my birthday readathon. And again, I don't need to talk about it. Apparently, it's historical fiction. Even though it was set in 1983, which was, yeah, Hyden Thomas, which was four years after I was born. How is historical fiction four years after I was born? 
I am feeling very old. Again, Taylor Jenkins read. I loved it. I loved, I loved um, Daisy Jones and the Six, and I've loved the other one. So now go, you go away now, please. I love Daisy Jones and the Six, and I loved the Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. This is the day of Nina Ruber's annual end of year summer party, and an anticipated fever pitch. Everyone is anyone who wants an invite and to catch a glimpse of the famous Ruber siblings. Nina, the talented surfer and supermodel. Brothers Jay and Hud, a championship surfer, and the others, a renowned photographer, and the adored baby sister Kit. Together, the siblings are a source of fascination in Malibu and the world over. Oh my God, look at that as well. Look at those pages. Gorgeous. Can't wait to read that. Then, this is not the one my mum got me Three Sisters by Heather Morris. You guys know I love Silka's Journey and the Tattoo of Outfits. I've got, I've got, I've read the stories of hope, but I've not bought it, so I'm going to have to buy it at some point. This is a series of three sisters, C.B. Magda and Liv Lever. Their story will break your heart, their journey will fill you with hope, and their names will be remembered. Survival would be their victory. I've been waiting for this. Can't wait again. That was what I asked my mum for Christmas. It's gorgeous. It's heart hitting. It's heavy. Can't wait to read it. I don't know when I'll read that one. Then the lovely Charlie from Charles Heathcote. He asked me if I wanted two books from the charity shop for him and he bought that he got them for me. Orley Farm, which is another big trollop. I don't know too much about it. I don't like knowing too much about the classics. But it is Mahusib. I think it's two books in one. I'm not sure. I need Charlie to tell me. But I love Anthony Trollope's work. This edition's gorgeous. Can't wait for that. And then lastly, he I got rid of my copy of Chocolat, but I'm now collecting the whole series. This edition is better than my copy anyway. And it's gorgeous. It's the first in this series. I'm loving the series, which I'm reading with Gemma from Reader Book Gem. Now I've got my own copy, so I've got the whole series. Thank you, Charlie. So that is all my gifted books. Now I will show you the number of books I bought. So I've been gifted 10. I've only bought 18. And I've unhauled three unread. So just to let you know, I've already read way more than 28 books off my list off my um, unread shelf. So my figures are going to be going down this month, which you would have read about in the other video. So the first book I found a Penguin's classic edition of Treasure Island, which I'm going to be reading with Gemma from Reader Book Gem. I think I want to save it for Victober because it's a short book for Victober. It's perfect. You guys don't need to know too much, too much about it. It's perfect. I can't wait to read it. Then I've got some Christmas books, but I didn't get around to them. So I got Cold Feet at Christmas which I will be reading next Christmas because it's a short one. It's a Debbie Johnson book and it's a short, perfect one. It's set in a remote Scottish castle in Christmas Eve. This one is going to be one I'm definitely saving for next year when I need a short Christmas book and I'm hoping I like it. So I'm just... Another Christmas book, The Village Christmas, Thomas showed me by Sue Moorcroft. I've loved the other Sue Moorcroft book that I've bought this year. And this looks really good. It's, uh, Alexa Kennedy is an interior decorator for the extraordinary. And she's tasked with giving the little village of Middleclip a community field cafe that she it's dreamed of. Another book for next Christmas. Actually, I'll show you the, another Christmas book, actually, Thomas. Okay. The other Christmas book is The Christmas Wishlist by Heidi Swain. This is a part of another series, the Winterbourne series, I believe. And I really wanted it. So to find it in the charity shop, it's brilliant. I'll read that this next Christmas as well. Upset over losing her job, Hattie decides to join her boyfriend abroad. But first, she's promised in Thomas, stop it. First, she's promised to spend her last Christmas in England with her friend Dolly in the quintessential festive town of Winbridge, which loads of their books have been set in. So I'm going to read that series this year. It wasn't my series goals, but I definitely want to read it this year. It's Christmas. It's kind of Thomas's same. This isn't. This is kind of Christmassy, but not totally. Have I just haven't met you yet, which is um, another book. And it's, yeah, it's sort of Christmassy, but I'm not going to read save it for Christmas. I'm going to read it when I need a cheering up book. Laura has built a career out of interviewing people on their epic real life love stories. When she picks up the wrong suitcase in the airport, she wonders if this could be the start of something that's written in the stars. I love this time next year. This is a new release and I really wanted it. There you go. And that's a kid book, actually. Thomas, sorry. <laughs> then I got Coming Home to the island house which is another historically fiction slash chick lit 
and that is in the set, first of all, it's set in the summer of 1939 after touring an unsettled Europe in the latest adventure. Roman E. Temple returns to Suffolk and to her new husband, the charismatic Jack W. But when Jack feels ill, the estranged children are called back in seven days to rebu to to bury the resentments and accept the new stepmother. So this looks good. Okay, I'm going to take Thomas's advice and show you the next book, which is Nicholas Nickleby by Charles Dickens. It's a Wordsworth classic edition. I found it for a pound. It's one of the only um, Dickens I don't have and I want to read it and I'm looking forward to it. But it is probably one of my biggest books because it's about 700 pages. Other people to see this. Okay, this one's a random one that the, the lady at the bookshop picked me up, which is A Parliament of Spies by Cassandra Clark. I don't know if I'm going to like this, but she kind of encouraged me to pick it up, so I listened to her. Hope I like it. No, Thomas, I'm going to read show this one next one. This is The Lion Above the Door by Oranji Durrell. Apparently this author's problematic and I don't quite know why, so I'm really sorry if it is. I picked it up before knowing, learning that. It's the author of the, back of the Boy at the Back of the Class, which I loved. Ever since I can remember, people have always start, stared at me and my family. Dad tells me it's because we're special. There's never anyone who looks like me, and my best friend Sanjita is my is is my school's history books. But this year is different because our school is going to learn about the Second World War. I saw my name, my exact name, carved high above the church door, above the light, the golden lion. I don't know who the other person in my name is yet, but I do know he's a hero, and that changes everything. Have a picture of I got another Christmas book, Sarah Morgan's Moonlight Over Manhattan. I love Sarah Morgan's books. Another one that I'll be saving for next year. This looks sundry. I know that I loved one of the other books by this author. Apparently it's contemporary, but I'm not sure. Ten-year-old Finn is a quirky, sensitive boy and he's having a tough time at school and at home. Outspoken Kaz, who has a sharp sense of humour and a heart of gold, is working at the cafe when Finn and his mum comes in. They don't know it yet, but the second time they all meet will be a moment that changes their lives forever. This is called The Secret Path by Karen Swan. It's one of the only Karen Swan books I haven't got, and I loved one of their books, and I'm not sure about the other one, but hopefully I'll love this. At 20 years old, <coughs> Tara Tremaine has everything. She's a trainee doctor engaged to a man of her dreams and a passionate American biology student called Alex Carter, but when her life seems perfect, Alex betrays them, her in the worst possible way. Mm. Exciting. This is... I've loved, I seem to be collecting this author's work, Le Le Lessons in Laughing Out Loud. Certainly just like the way I'm feeling today. Willow and Holly are identical twins. They are everything to everybody. Holly calls Willow her rock, her soulmate, and her other half. Willow feels the same about Holly. They are alike in every respect except for one. Willow is afraid on the inside, but, and it all because of the secret, the one that binds the sisters closely together, and has meant their adults' lives have taken two very different paths. It's good but hard hitting, so I'm preparing to get upset. Here you go. I've read this book, but I read my sister's copy and I wanted my own copy, and it's The Mercies by Karen Millwood Hargreaves. You guys know I love this. You guys know I love it. Look at the spine, look how gorgeous it is. I wanted my own copy. It's perfect. Pam Weaver. Pam Weaver, always in my heart. A very good wartimey kind of book, set in Worthy in 1939. When war is declared, 13-year-old twins, Shirley and Tom, are evacuated to the coastal town. They are very close to their mother, but leaving London is the only way to keep them safe. This is good, but very hard-hitting. I am currently going to pick up the first in this series, The East End Angels, because I need it to be a good last, in, last of the year book. And I've got to find the Christmas book for it. So, for 20p, I've only got one more book on my series, which is on my Amazon wish list that I need to collect. So I'll collect that and then I'll put the whole series. But I thought I'm going to start this series. I started, I picked up this series because East End, which is where my my mum was born in. Angels. I believe, I do believe in angels to a certain extent. So perfect. This will be safe for next Christmas. The girls and then last but not least, a thriller. The Girls by Lisa Jewell, which I'm looking forward to reading because I love Lisa Jewell's thrillers. They're scary, but they're not too petrifying. So looking forward to getting that. And that's it. This book here is a bit shorter because Describe. obviously I'm poor. <laughs> As Thomas says, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, not subscribe, ring on my ding a ling. 
I'm sorry for the Let's fact that <coughs> I'm sorry for the fact that this video is shorter and I've not gone into more detail on the books. But I'm feeling pants when I'm recording this. And I hope you all I hope none of you get this. And if you have had it, take care. We'll get through this together. Don't have COVID, it's horrible. It is horrible. But anyway, take care guys. Bye-bye <laughs> guys. Bye-bye.